Today's lecture covers infectious disease and epidemiology. So what is infectious disease? It's an illness caused by a pathogen. And epidemiology is monitoring and controlling disease occurrence to promote public health. So some of the things we look for are what are known as opportunistic pathogens. Those only cause illness when the host is weakened. So if your immune system is weak, for instance, and a true pathogen, and that does not require a weakened host to actually cause a disease. So an epidemic then is a widespread disease outbreak in a particular region during a specific time. Now, currently with COVID, we are undergoing what's known as a pandemic, and that's what occurs when an epidemic spreads to numerous countries. So some diseases are spread then from animals to humans, and we call those zoonotic types of diseases. So we have to be aware that animals sometimes can harbor uh, things like viruses that can certainly be spread to uh, humans. Now, if we look back uh, to Robert Koch, we realize that he was the first person to say a specific microbe causes a specific disease. So that's very important to know when you're treating a patient, that if there's a specific cause of it, you'll be able to kill or inhibit the growth of whatever is causing that disease. So there's different ways that you uh, can spread pathogens, direct or indirect uh, contact. So for direct, you have to actually be having, let's say, sexual relationships, touching, an animal can bite you, uh, you might be in water that's contaminated, for instance, and sometimes from mother to child. Now, indirectly would be things like airborne uh, types of particles, syringes, vectors such as uh, mosquitoes. So think of uh, Lyme disease or malaria uh, when you think of different kinds of vectors, ticks, fleas, mosquitoes. And also flies, for instance, can also carry uh, disease as well. So two terms to know would be virulence, which is uh, a description of the severity of a disease following an infection. And then the pathogenicity is the general ability of an infectious agent to cause disease. So again, epidemiology focuses on di diseases uh, in populations. <clears throat> so what does an epidemiologist look at? Well, different environmental factors, so climate, uh, geography, food source, water source, the host, who is the most uh, predisposed to getting a disease, and what is causing it. Is it a fungus? Is it a bacteria? Is it a virus? Is it a worm? Etc. So these are all things that we need to take into consideration. So if something is known to be carried in a flea or mosquito tick, uh, the best way then to potentially reduce that risk would be to get rid of fleas, mosquito, uh, mosquitoes, ticks, for instance. So that's one way that you could actually limit that. So in public health, one of the most important things is washing your hands. We're learning that the hard way. Not everybody washes their hands. Vaccinations have to be mandated so people are protecting themselves. The CDC that serves as a central source of epidemiology information, I highly recommend you look there. Also look at the World Health Organization's website. They have a lot of really good information. So what are we looking at? A whole population. So you look at a population, maybe you're looking at a uh, certain part of the population, elderly people or young individuals, etc. We're looking for the existence of a disease in the population and prevalence. So that would be in a given population. So for instance, when we are uh, studying COVID, we're looking to see where it's located, but in specific populations, let's say in Florida, who is most affected? Is it elderly people? Is it young children? Is it middle-aged people? So those are all things that have to be taken into consideration. So again, you look at the incident rate. Now, 
uh, duration is how long an infection lasts. And here's an example with measles. You can see in the 50s and 60s, this was this up and down uh, in the number of cases, but once we got the vaccine, the number of cases went down. So vaccinations are very important to control then a lot of different types of infections in our populations. Now again, sadly, hospitals are a hotbed for infection. Uh, it's very important uh, to keep the infections in the hospital from getting out into the real world. So we have to do a better job in hospitals. Uh, these are the diseases in there developed from a healthcare intervention. So for instance, long care facilities, uh, outpatient care facilities. So we have to make sure that those areas are, are, are cleaned up better than they have been. So in the U.S. alone, hospital acquired uh, infections increased in the 20 year span from 1975 to 95 by 40%. CDC feels right now that one in 25 people will develop uh, an infection while in the hospital. 75,000 die every year from those infections and that costs somewhere around $35 billion per year. So what can cause it? Well, medical devices uh, are sometimes contaminated. Uh, also, Inside of the patient, things like catheters, central lines, these are breeding grounds for different types of infections. Hospital personnel, well, a lot of times people aren't washing their hands like they're supposed to, so they're, they're passing things from one patient to another. So some of the common uh, HAIs are uh, C. diff, urinary tract infections, um, surgical wound infections, MRSA, and others. So there's a lot of different ones that uh, are out there that we need to be aware of. C. diff, by and large, right now is the biggest threat. 55% of all hospital-acquired infections or healthcare-acquired infections are uh, C. diff. And then MRSA is about 5%. Catheter-associated uh, urinary tract infections uh, are actually second highest at 19%. So these are the common causes. Staph aureus, E. coli, C. diff, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Uh, big note, a lot of these are becoming resistant. MRSA is methicillin resistant Staph aureus. So we have to be aware that resistance is a real problem nowadays too. So first step uh, in reducing these problems is actually have people committed to monitor that. Uh, and train people, and if an infection starts, take care of it right away. Basic things again, hand washing, always at the top. Please take a screenshot of this. Hand washing, make sure you're wearing your PPE. Sanitize the area, sterilize equipment, limiting patient transport, and limiting the equipment used to one patient at a time, and if you have to isolate patients, do so. It's very important to do so.